Hey everybody, welcome back to Ikara or Luidicus. What about the portal that we talked about yesterday? Wasn't that a phenomenal article? The portal archway into another dimension. I mean, we've been talking about dimensions and here and there, and you know, Yahushua wanted to join the dimensions and be amongst his people, but wasn't that phenomenal to talk in terms of portals? Have you found the portal? Because that's what happens inside here. That's what this whole dwelling place was washed clean, set apart, and delivered by his blood for, so that he could come into us. Mashiach within, Yahushua wants to open that portal within us so that we can be with him, have an intimate, peaceful relationship with him, and have, as we've been discovering, absolute shalom, an absolute overwhelming peace and favor, and just a general sense of well-being, overall sense of well-being in your vessel, in your life. It doesn't mean we don't get tested, doesn't mean we don't go through trials, doesn't mean we don't just go through hideous agony watching what goes on around us in this whirlwind of chaos. But inwardly, even if our outward carcasses are in shell shock, even if our outward beings are breaking down, you know, even if we're just weeping or crying or devastated or anything, inward we can know still that that portal is open to us. And Yahushua understands what is going on out in the world. He understands, he lived it, he went there. Have you ever dropped to your knees and sweated drops of blood? He has. He knows the depths of depravity, the depths of pressure, the depth of agony, the depth of evil, because all of it came onto him on that torture stake. So don't ever think that Yahushua doesn't understand. Don't ever think that he's sitting up on some cloud somewhere. No, if you've been immersed in his name, and he lives within you. And he is living through you, existing, dwelling, possessing you, your life. That's the purpose of being his bride. That's the purpose of going for the first resurrection. You've got to be behaving the right way. It's all about behavior. That's why we're going through Ikara, Leviticus, and we're coming today to sexual immorality. What is sexual immorality? Here it is. Sexual perversion, sexual immorality, anything that Yahushua doesn't deem as clean, good, sexual behavior. Sexuality is not evil. Sex is not evil. He gave it as a gift to mankind, to men and women. He gave them the desires for each other. But of course, the dragon comes in and twists everything upside down and turns it on its head and perverts. Pervert, perverts, perverts everything, perverts, perverts everything. What is sexual immorality? Until Yahushua defined what specific behaviours were sexually immoral, what was immoral or not differed from culture to culture and nation to nation. Even though females are obviously affected by these rulings, the instructions here are only being directed at men. There is going to be a little bit of segregating in these scriptures and unapologetically, Yahushua doesn't apologize for his instructions for men and for women. Most of these scriptures are directed at men, but they do involve women. Then Yahushua said to Musha, give the following instructions to the people of Yisrael. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. So do not act like the people where you used to live in Egypt. Or like the people of Canaan, where I'm taking you. He says a lot here, I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Remember, that's the, the vow, that's the, your name meant something. You know, the power of his name, it was like declaring by saying his name, it's like stamping the situation with his power, saying, don't forget, I am Yahuwah. That, that in itself is enough for you to obey me. That's why he says at the end of sentences, all for I am Yahuwah. In other words... He's Yahuwah, do it, you know. I've, it's, my name is enough to get your attention, you know. So I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Do not act like the people where you used to live in Egypt. And do not act like the people in Canaan where I'm taking you. It's very important that you do not behave 
like the Egyptians, where you came from, or the Canaanites, where you're going. And what, what do those, all those people have in common? Sexual immorality and the pagan idolatry that goes on hand in hand with it. You mustn't imitate their way of life, but obey all my instructions. For I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. If you obey my instructions, you will find life through them. I am Yahuwah. You will find life through them. What does life feel like? Or what does death feel like? These are feelings. These can be destinations, but these are also feelings. Life. If you, if you obey my instructions, I'm there. You please me. You're in my favour. You'll find life. I am Yahuwah. So just remember, in the turquoise here, these instructions were not really about throwing a bucket of cold water on sex-hungry hung, sex predatory men, though that may have been the case at times. It was more about defining who a man could and could not marry. Remember, we're talking about men here. And rather than just talking about sex with this and sex with that, it was all about, in this culture, who am I allowed to marry? And who am I not permitted to marry? Because in Egypt and in Canaan, you could marry anything, fornicate with anything, have sex with anything, trees, animals, men, women, same sex, or anything that was going on was permitted. That's why Yahushua had to make it clear, you are not to be like the nations. Your behavior is to be set apart. Your behavior is to be set apart. And there's no greater behavior that affects the person, pollutes them, defiles them, than sexual behavior. Things of a sexual nature really make you go weird if you do wrong things. Your behavior becomes weird. And you isolate yourself. You want to stay away from the light. Those that are in the light, you can't approach him. This is what I'm saying about even though you're washed in his blood and he can approach you now, because to him you're clean, you can't approach him because you're in this disobedience and you don't want to give it up and, and you like you even like it oh but i don't like but well you keep doing it so you must like it you like it you want to do it otherwise if you hated it you'd stop doing it you know you can't just blame demons they give us thoughts but we are the choosers we choose the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh and the pride of life we are the choosers demons don't change you got to fight them off. But we don't want to, do we? We want to let them in and we want to partake of things and look at things, you know? You must never have sex with a close relative, your mother or any of his wives for that matter, your sister, half-sister or stepsister, granddaughter, auntie, uncle, daughter-in-law, sister-in-law, for they are your close relatives. So you can't have sex with a close relative. You're not allowed to marry Sex and marriage are the same thing, remember? You're not allowed to marry a close relative. And don't marry or have sex with a woman and her daughter or her granddaughter. So that's pretty, you know, don't have, a, don't have sex with a woman and her daughter or her granddaughter at the same time. With a menstruous woman or your neighbor's wife, do not marry your wife's sister while your wife is still alive either, or they will be rivals. See, common sense, don't marry a your wife's sister while your wife is still alive, they will be, they'll be at each other's throat. Which sisters do we remember? Right here. What about Jakob marrying Leah and Raquel? Many times in the scripture, we see behaviours done that aren't Yahushua's ideal plan for mankind. However, he permits them at the time because he can. Obviously, the best scriptural pattern. We're looking at patterns, remember? Not the hows, whys, and everything. The pattern. Looking for the pattern. And what's the best pattern? Obviously, the best scriptural pattern for marriage is one man and one woman. Just as the ideal, just as it was in the garden. One man and one woman. Therefore, a man will leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Yeah? Man and woman. That's the pattern. That's the definition of marriage. One man and one woman. So, and, 
Ash and an Asher. Well, ladies only. Adultery was only a female crime. <gasps> Listen carefully. Adultery was only a female crime. Back in this era of scripture, crimes of adultery were based on the marital status of women only, not the men. If a married man had sex with an unmarried woman who is not his wife, this is not considered adultery. He would have to make arrangements to marry her though, for as we know, sex is marriage. However, the reverse was not true. If a married woman slept with an unmarried man, that was considered adultery, breaking wedlock. For in this era, women were treasured possessions of ownership to their fathers and then their husbands. So you understand, this is why a lot of these scriptures are taken out of context and used for sexual uh, behavior by the religions. And it is about sexuality, but it's more to do with the culture and marriage. Because as we see here, these instructions have been given to men to start with. So that's the other thing you should understand. The head of the home is the man. Who she declares that all through scripture, that's the pattern. And it's an unapologetic pattern. That is the pattern. The husband is the head of the home. Having said that, it was looked down upon severely and even punishable if any man was caught abusing, violently or verbally, his uh, family, his wife, his children. So there's got to be balance. Yes, the husband is the head of the home, but it also means he was held to a higher standard of behaviour as well. So we're talking about Yahushua's ways here, not what we see in the world today. So adultery was only a female crime. A, a, a man in this culture could put his eyes on another woman and sleep with her and marry her. Just add add her to his to his collection of wives. But a woman could not do that. Could not do that. It was not considered an adultery because adultery was breaking wedlock, breaking a marriage covenant. Not ideal though, because remember in Yahushua's economy, in the pattern, it's one man and one woman. If a married man had sex in the black here, if a married man had sex with a married woman, that was a whole different story. For he was sowing his seed into another man's wife, which would produce a child that was born outside the family's heritage and would be an outcast. So even then, it's not even about breaking wedlock. It's, it's to do with, uh, the definition of it is putting your member into another woman and sowing seed in her which was illegal because if she's from another tribe, another bloodline, all the mishmash, you know, not on, not allowed to do it. So interesting for 21st century reference, sex between an unmarried man and unmarried woman is not even mentioned. That's interesting. Oh, sex before marriage is illegal and you're not allowed to have sex before marriage. And we were taught that in the churches. Sex before marriage is it's not mentioned scriptures sex before marriage why because they fail to understand that sex is marriage and marriage is sex it's the same thing you are not married legally in your history's eyes until you've consummated the marriage so we're clearly only talking about marriage here who a man is permitted to marry and who is not can't marry close family members can't marry a neighbor's wife can't you know, marry him, you can't do this and you can't do that. So Yahushua is very specific. But just understand that adultery back in this era was only considered a female crime because the males could marry as many women as they wanted, really. In this era. As much as that might make your stomach turn, that's just the culture that they lived in. So we've talked about a married man sleeping with an unmarried woman. Of course, this unmarried woman could not be living with her father because then she would be the father's possession. She'd have to be free. Otherwise, if, she, if he slept with an, uh, a woman 
who was a virgin who uh, was in her father's home still, he would have to pay the bride price and marry her because no one else is going to marry now because she's been defiled. Men back here only wanted to marry a pure, a pure virgin bride. So, and that was what the father was selling, offering to her husband, to the husband. So it's about, it just doesn't sound good, does it? But it's about property, possession, and the quality of the possession. The women were the most treasured possessions. And so um, you couldn't, going to sleep with another woman if you did if you lived with her father the father would be very angry you've got to pay the bride price now plus x amount of percentage da 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 because no one else is going to marry now because she's been you know defiled so you slept with her you marry her and many times i mean that was the big test on the husband remember we went through all that the husband and wife would sleep together and the sign of the blood the blood covenant the blood covenant on the sheet if there was no blood on the sheet the husband would know he'd been ripped off, his wife was not a virgin. So um, it's about carrying over the possession from one to the other. So interesting in the 21st century, sex between an unmarried man and an unmarried woman, that is a woman who is not married and a woman who does not live with her father. So sex between an unmarried man and unmarried woman is not even mentioned. Those who say sex before marriage is evil and this and that and this and that, Adding all this pressure onto young people, it's not even, this is the foundation of what right and wrong is in scripture, not mentioned. However, let's read on. We know that in Yahushua's eyes, consummation and marriage are the same thing. So, multiple uncommitted partners would definitely be considered as evil, immoral behaviour, wouldn't it? So, see how understanding the definition of marriage makes a big difference it's not what we thought you know oh you just can't have sex before marriage well sex is marriage so you know you can't have no you can't have sex with lots of different people because you're marrying all of them in Yahushua's eyes and a man who's not willing to uh, make covenant and commitment and sacrifice and love these women all these women that he's sleeping with is actually breaking the blood covenant like breaking the instructions can you see that? And a woman who does that behaviour was considered a whore. So, what does that say about the women today who aren't even getting paid for it? You know? But they're still sleeping around, but they're not getting paid for it. They're considered a whore by scripture, but they're not getting any money out of it. Back to the scripture. Do not permit any of your children to be offered as a sacrifice to Moloch. For you mustn't bring shame on the name of you who are your alien by doing this wicked behaviour. Why are we why are we going from sexual behaviour, who a man can and cannot marry, straight into this worship of Moloch? Why is he just mentioned that smack bang in the middle here? The horrid activities the heathens practiced at their temples in worship to their deities included child sacrifice and male temple prostitution, which involved the common practice of anal sex. So Yahushua is condemning the two most practiced abominations that the pagan nations engaged in during their religious observances in this statement, and also the one that directly follows. So what are the two most abominable practices? Sacrificing your children to Moloch and do not have sex with another man as with a woman, for it is an abomination. Remember, underline things that say abomination because those behaviors never change. We can't just say, oh, that's been fulfilled, or that's been, you know, that's, that's something that Yahushua hates, always has, always will. It's a total perversion, twist, you know, knocking it on its head of his instruction. And remember, he's into patterns. And if you knock the patterns and twist them and pervert, pollute them and pervert them, it's not happy. So don't uh, sacrifice your children to Moloch. That was the first abomination. And the second one is do not have sex with another man, as with a woman, for it is an abomination. And do not have sex with an animal. Well, this behavior is absolutely perverse. It's a perversion of his instructions, a perversion of the improper use of sexuality and your sexual organs. 
That's why this scripture up here was put right in the middle here. We're talking about sexual behavior, who a man can and cannot marry. And suddenly we're talking about Moloch. Why? Because this is the behavior they did at the pagan temples. So this scripture is condemning the male temple prostitution. And that's what, what that's what they did. It was common culture for the temple priests, Egypt, Kenan, the pagan temples, to, to engage in anal sex. That was what they got off on in the pagan temples, in worship to their deities. And the women would get in on it too, because think about it, if you were a temple prostitute, of which there were many, um, if you were having sex the normal way, you'd get pregnant and go out of business. So the women would uh, have sex anally as well. So that way they wouldn't get pregnant. So you can see just how much Yahusha hates the behavior, the sexual behavior of the nations. And take all this into your day, take all of this into the surrounding nations that you live in, the culture we live in, when we turn the TV on, when we surf our phone, everywhere. What is the behavior like? Sexual. Every show on TV now is reality TV. First dates, married at first sight, you know, Love Island, you know. All these things are social experiments between men and women, or, you know, men and men, women and women. Social experiments, you know. It's all in front of us every day. And if you're not careful, we start to think it's normal. Every movie and TV show has to have gay people in it now, pashing away as though it's normal because they have their rights as well. You know, but you can't, of course, you can't say anything about it. Otherwise, you're, you're a bigot. And you're, you know, so don't say anything about it. But I'm just, I'm talking to the bride here. Of course, we're coming to this LGBTQ plus movement now. They've added other letters since I've made this, but I can't remember what they all stand for. So, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer. There's another one on there now. I think it's an I. Inter intersexual. I can't remember what it means. Someone who identifies as something. Anyway, it's just bizarre. It's, it's just, it's an abomination. So let's look at this rainbow here. The enemy has taken the sign of the eternal blood covenant of deliverance between Yahusha and Noach, an emblem of obedience. That was the rainbow down here, used it to lift up and celebrate abominable behavior. Global destruction through water won't happen again, but the fire is coming. So while people are con using this scripture, holding this scripture up to condemn people who are homosexual and lesbian and all these sort of things, this scripture is not condemning any form of labels or um, relationships. This is condemning a certain sexual behavior one specific sexual behavior, and that is anal sex. That's what it's, because it's talking about, you've got to read it in context. It's talking about the temple situation with the priests. And we know, if you do any study, that the temple priests engaged in anal sexual intercourse. And so did the women, though they didn't get pregnant. That's what's being condemned here. But of course, that's the whole point of being homosexual, lesbian or LGBTQ, isn't it? improper use of sexuality. Of course, that's why most of the population has mental health issues. That and many other reasons. So do not defile yourself in any of these ways. For the people I'm driving out before you have defiled themselves through all these abominable behaviors. And the entire land has become defiled the land has become defiled. So I'm punishing the people who live there and I will cause the land to vomit them out. Interesting here. You must, so you must obey all my set apart instructions and not commit any of these abominable behaviors, defiling the land and giving me a reason to vomit you out too. So if you do all these behaviors, you get vomited out of the land. This of course applies to both the native born Israelite and the foreigners living among you. 
Whoever commits any of these abominable behaviors will be cut off from the community of Yisrael. Cut off. Executed. And uh, spiritually severed from your relationship with Yusha. So obey my instructions and do not defile yourselves by committing any of these abominable behaviors. For I am you who are your Elohim. How many abominables are in there? One, two, three, four, five. Perverse and abominable are the same. Six. So there's about six in there. Get the feeling Yahushua doesn't like this behavior? Do you think he's changed his mind? Is this one of those behaviors that transforms? No, he just hates it because it's not the pattern. Polygamy isn't even the pattern anymore. You're not supposed to take multiple wives. Oh, oh yes, you could legally and not get in trouble. I mean, you could but with the, the government, but Yahushua technically, it's not disobedient behavior, but it's not the ideal pattern. One man and one woman is the ideal pattern from the garden. That's what we're trying to get back to, isn't it? So that's how we know how to behave. So every single one of the sexual behaviors Yahushua has singled out here will cause ritual impurity. And when a high enough number of these evil behaviors are committed by a large enough portion of the population, Yahushua will say, that's it, and take action to remove the people from the land. Throughout the scripture, we're going to see this principle in action for there's a strong link between the land and its people. When a nation reaches a level of immorality, Yahushua has deemed as too excessive, that nation will begin to experience a series of disasters at his hand. It may be an economic collapse, a devastating natural disaster, or even widespread sickness. Look at Genesis 15, 16, where it says, the disobedience of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. What does that scripture mean there? The disobedience of the Amorites has not yet reached its full measure. So he wasn't gonna judge them yet because their disobedience hadn't reached the full measure. Well, what Yahushua is saying is that once the wickedness and evil has become too much, when all of the baby sacrificing and perverse sexual behavior of the Amorites has reached a certain tipping point, then he is going to act by bringing Abraham's descendants back into the land where the Amorites dwell. Or to be more specific, Yahushua is going to use his people as warriors to forcibly drive out the Amorites. Very interesting, isn't it? So he doesn't like these Amorites because of their behavior. He didn't like Sodom and Gomorrah, not just because of their sexual behavior, but because of their cruelty, their cruel behavior, inhospitable behavior as well. And of course we know he flooded the earth as well for, for not only uh, sexuality, not only sexual perversion and immorality, but forming giants, Nephilim, sleeping, you know, interfering with the human genome, intermixing with you know, angels and humans and, you know, all that stuff that they did is an abomination to him. And he wiped out the whole world except one little ark of people. Every nation in history that has reached an excessive level of depravity, as determined by Yahushua, experienced his harsh hand of judgment, whether it was Germany in World War II, the Middle Eastern nations, or some of the humanistic European nations currently experiencing financial collapse. How long do you think Yahushua is going to turn a blind eye to abortion, which is nothing less than our modern version of child sacrifice? How long do you think he's going to allow the LGBTQ to be lifted up and celebrated to the point where gay marriage, gay pastors, transgender drag queens and gender fluidity in children becomes the norm? How long do you think he's going to put up with this? Just as he did in Sodom and Gomorrah, just as he did at the time of Noah, just as he did when the Amorites had reached their level, the, the abominable behaviours Amorites. How long do you think it's going to be? Why won't you? You should come back. Why won't he do this? Why won't he? Why? Where are you, Father? What's going on? Why are you allowing all this? Just wait. It's filling up. It's filling up. The depravity and disobedience and pure evil is filling up the measure. 
And when it reaches the tipping point, that's when he's coming back. How much longer do you think Yahushua will allow his word and presence being removed from every government institution, school, activity, and public space in our nation? Of course, Yahushua is slow to anger, yet history shows that he judged his own set-apart people, Yisrael, and he judged them very harshly. If that's the case, he will certainly not overlook us either. The reapers and fire are coming. That's interesting, isn't it? That was all about who a man can and cannot marry. What he can stick it into, stick his member into, and what he can't. And remember, we're looking at patterns. The perfect pattern of an ideal marriage is one man and one woman. So why would you settle for anything like, you know, other weird other forms of polygamy and other things? Why would you want to just so you can be sexually perverse or whatever or, you know? Do you think the wives are really happy sharing their husband? Think it makes for a happy marriage? Or is that man, it just sort of says a lot about the man, doesn't it? Even though I'm permitted by my religion to, it wasn't saying that you're willing to do that. You know? It's almost like having an affair, because you're showing that you're showing your original wife that you're not satisfied with her, and you want a younger model. It's not fair. It's not the ideal pattern. What does the scripture say? Be satisfied with the breasts of the wife from your youth. You, the wife that he's given you, be satisfied with her body. Be satisfied with her, and her everything about her. Be satisfied with her. Don't be looking at other things. That's what that's the world we live in today. Sexual immorality and perversion, where pornography and nudity is just the norm. But that's actually worshipping an idol. That's that is idolatry. Because you are lifting up a human creature and idolizing it. You're not worshipping Yahusha. You are worshipping another human being. And wanting to see them naked and wanting to see them to, to see them do perverse things. Instead of dwelling and being and being intimate with the person that he's given you. If you are young and single and don't have anybody yet, then that's where you talk to Yahushua. I'm talking to the bride here, remember, those who are immersed in the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. If you are young and single, if you are old and single and want a partner, a wife or a husband, then don't be like all the other religious freaks out there, Messianics and Nastrums and all those things. Go and get yourself a nice haircut, put some nice perfume on, go to the dentist and clean your teeth properly, and wear, buy some nice clothes, and just meet people. I met my current wife online, and you've got to sift through the masses of humanity and the filth and all the people that are disgusting, But and she wasn't a believer when I met her either, but Yahushua plucked her out of the world for me because my, my other wife buggered off. She didn't want Yahushua anymore. So we now have a big party of 10 up on the hill every night. Her two children and my six children, her and I. Yahushua's done all this. You couldn't have planned it like this. But my point is, if you are young and single, Yahushua knows what you need. So don't be isolating yourselves and just spending all your time by yourself in the word and praying and all this stuff. If you want to find somebody, go and find somebody. You know, you're not going to, you're very slim to none. Are you going to find somebody who's a, in the bride? You're going to have to bring them into the bride and you won't have to say much. Your behavior, because everybody out in the world has had such a hard life and a horrible time that by the time you meet somebody, if you've got something in you, the spark, if you've got a portal open inside you that produces love because it's from Yusha, someone's going to be drawn to that and they're going to want to know about it and they're going to want to come into that experience with you. So that's my advice to young people or like old people too if you want to meet someone or, you know, go and meet someone. Stop being so religious. Go down to the local pub if you want. Go and have a drink with your mates. Go do all these things that you can, you can be set apart within yourself and still meet people and have relationships, you know? So while we're talking about the sexual behavior and what immorality is, I want to go to another article because I was looking at various scriptures and I realized most of them are in this article here. So we'll just use this article here. 
it's about homosexuality, but it talks about relationships too. Asana Koitis, what it really means. A world of hurt doesn't come close to describing the rebellion we're bombarded with today. Yahushua was asked about marriage. He didn't indicate that any power joined the two in marriage, other than Yahuwah. A city, clerk, pope, pastor, or any other official doesn't join them, and if they do, they are usurping Yahuwah's authority. None of those people have the, the authority to marry, only Yahuwah. Only Yahushua can bring two people together. Notice Yahushua uses the terms male and female, and the number two, look, he says, and he answering said to them, did you not read that he who has made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is the pattern. Male and female, and the two shall become one flesh. So that they no longer are two, but one flesh. Therefore, what Elohim has joined together, let man not separate. The two shall become one flesh. These two are male and female. The question what does the Torah have to say about homosexuality? The Torah deals with it clearly head on. And we just read that scripture, remember? If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. It's an abomination, other translations say, which I like better. Detestable or abomination are really the same thing. They must be put to death. Their blood will be on their own heads. Interesting. Christian translators opted to interpret the Greek word asinakoites and used the word effeminate, which just means, you know, feminine, for the phrase homosexual offenders. But you see, when you see the literal meaning of the Greek, it will leave no doubt in your mind. In the King James Version, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous, Torah shunners, shall not inherit the kingdom of Allah? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, adulterers, nor effeminate, which is sodomites, really the original Greek word is saying sodomy, that's what it's saying. Homosexual offenders, which is asinakwentis, that's the original Greek word here. And they smoothed it over by saying effeminate or homosexual offenders, you know. The NIV says the same thing, practically, let's get down a bit. 1 Corinthians 6, 9, Elohim refers to Yahuwah, but yeah, whatever, yeah. So the term... At 1 Corinthians 9 literally means male coitus, the identical behavior of the sodomites. Coitus, coitus means the act of sex. Some may remember what happened to the city of Sodom and why it happened. Translators soften this literal meaning by using effeminate or homosexual offenders to convert, convey the idea. The Greek word at 1 Corinthians 6 9, asana coitus, partly based on coitus, giving us the word coitus. The first part of the word asan means male. Thus, putting the two parts, arson and koiti, together, we see it correctly defined as sodomites. The S ending in arson and koiti makes the term masculine. A gay pastor may fail to comprehend the meaning of the sin of Sodom, which was destroyed as an example to us who would live in that way. And he would also be ignoring a clear warning given at 1 Corinthians 6 9. So, while certain scriptures may not be referring to homosexuality, and certain scriptures may not be referring to sex outside of marriage, to look at scripture like that is to not read it in context because sex is marriage. Men with men or women with animals are both situations where it should be clear to everyone that something is wrong and not normal. Many women have abandoned their natural function also. That's the scripture I wanted to talk about there. When, when Paul says, many women have abandoned their natural function. Well, most people assume that they're talking about uh, lesbianism. It's not actually talking about lesbianism. It's talking about back in the temple prostitutes. Natural function is to have sex in the front hole, but they weren't. They were having it in the back hole. Anal sex. So they were swapping their natural function. Remember, everything goes back to Leviticus. This is the culture. Everybody was talking about quoting, using Leviticus as the basis. So that's why Paul says many women have abandoned their natural function. Many women have abandoned their natural function also and turned away from childbearing, see? Many who have put their professional lives ahead of making families fall into this thinking. 21st century, what's this? Many who have put their professional lives ahead of making families fall into this thinking. Interesting. 
homosexuals to make themselves feel normal attempt to adopt children and usurp the concept of marriage, calling on the legal systems to declare their union a marriage. And the legal systems, one by one, are declaring it a marriage. But what does Yahusha think? His ways are not our ways. Definitely not the world's ways. What does he call it? An abomination. They call home, they call heterosexuals breeders. Yeah, cool. A perversion would be any activity not intended by our Creator. A perversion would be any activity not intended by our Creator. A perversion would be any activity not intended by our Creator. A perversion would be any activity not intended by our Creator. If women all got together by themselves, men would be left without their natural affection. See? A man's natural affection is towards his woman. That's why a man is given a sexual drive so is a woman for each other. So when Yahusha says, even if you look at a woman lustfully in your mind, you are committing adultery with her, many have tried to excuse that and say, oh, he was talking about claiming her in marriage and taking another man's wife, and yeah, well, even if he was, but the whole point of lust. Remember we looked up that word back in our wilderness studies? The lust. The drawing, the deep desire, the craving, the yearning, the heavy breathing. That lust towards a woman that's not yours. The only woman you can call yours is one that you have uh, been given in a blood covenant of marriage and consummated. She's yours and you are, she's yours and you are hers. So, young people, if you want to know the pattern of being married, you don't want the guilt then the scripture makes it very clear that uh, Paul speaking to Timothy treat do not rebuke an older man but treat him as a father uh, reason with him plead with him as a father older uh, treat the older women like mothers treat the younger men as brothers treat the younger women as sisters in all purity so there there is your instruction if you're not sure should you be going out there pushing up the titties and you know you know sitting with your legs apart you know and flashing trying to gain people's attention bringing everything into the sexual organs you know that's humor today everybody's not think doesn't think it's funny unless it's sexual is that Yahusha's way though are we to be flirting battering our eyelids and drawing people in through sexuality that's the behavior of the world see you can interpret these scriptures and pull out a whole lot of rules and regulations and cultural stuff that doesn't relate to us. Or you can look at the one thing that has never changed throughout time, and that is behavior. So if you're confused as to how you should behave sexually, well, if you're married, between husband and wife, and young people who aren't married, old people who aren't married, who want to know the pattern and how they should treat other people in the world, and definitely the body of believers in Yahushua's bride, Paul said to Timothy, treat each other in all purity. If you haven't married somebody and you've entered a blood covenant with them, consummated with them, you treat all women like they are your sister. You don't go kissing people. You don't greet people with a kiss on the lips either. That's dreadful. People who want to kiss each other on the lips. No. Oh. Dreadful, weird behavior sexual behavior kissing people kissing your children on the lips you don't, no don't kiss my lips no kiss me on the cheek you know it's not right you know you're teaching children sexual behavior oh it's just innocent affection yeah we'll do it on the cheek same affection isn't it these behaviors can cut us off from Yahusha's favor you know do you want to be in Yahusha's favor I do and and many times I read commentaries and things of people excusing, even uh, masturbation. That's not hurting. Oh, that's not hurting anybody. Well, what about improper use? Because you can get off on yourself so much that you don't even want to be with your wife or your husband. It's improper use. Oh, but I don't look at any... Well, A, that's a lie because you're looking at something in your mind. Something's turning you on. Something's making you want to do it. It's not just biological. Uh, the body gets rid of any fluids it needs to in the night if it needs to. You don't need to help it along. Um, so 
that's not, that's just, just an excuse. Oh, what about the story of Onan? Oh, that wasn't because he was, he, he spilled his seed. That was because he just, he was just a bastard and wouldn't give his dead brother's wife a child. And that was very important back then. That was because he was a horrible person and stingy. That's why he was killed. It wasn't because of the masturbation. It was both. It was both. So don't make excuses. And at the end of the day, because I am talking to the bride here, if you don't believe me, go and test the theory. If you believe that masturbation is not wrong, go and test the theory and see how you feel. I can tell you, you feel like death. And you, if you continue and insist and keep doing it, your behavior will go strange and shifty and, imp and unpredictable because it's disobedience to Yahushua's instructions and it's particularly of a sexual nature, you'll start going weird and you'll start talking to yourself and thinking things and muttering and doing all these weird shifty behaviors. And it's because of your disobedience, the secret things you wanna keep under your tent. Sexual disobedience is really important to Yahushua because he's provided everything we need in our lives. Young people, old people, if you're unmarried and you have these desires, Yahushua said, you can't contain yourselves to get married. You know? And when you get to a certain age in the 21st century, you're not going to find a virgin bride anywhere or a virgin husband. So just find somebody that you like and you get along with and that is willing to love you for who you are and move on with it. And if they come to Yahushua through your behaviour, great. If they don't, marry someone who's got a, at least got a respect for what you believe, you know? So that's the best advice I can give. That's with this portal, remember, it's all about the portal. You don't want to shut the portal. That's the only connection you have with the higher dimension. That's the only down payment, the only taste, the only drops of life we get from this dimension that Yahusha has connected with his own blood and his own body. So that was all about sexual behaviours, guys. Stay strong and uh, just do what you need to do and make it right. Yahushua said, just go and don't do that anymore. Go and sin no more. Go and be disobedient no more. Yeah? You're washed clean. You're healed. You're forgiven. Have it.